What's going on guys and welcome back to LOI TV for the first time in 2020, the start of a big, big year. And today we are back with the 10th episode of the LOI Transfer Show. There has been a lot going on in the last couple of weeks with teams putting the finishing touches to their squads for the upcoming campaign that's not too far away. Let me know how you guys are feeling ahead of the upcoming campaign down in the comments below and make sure to like the video. And while you're down there, you might as well subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump right into it. Starting off down south with Cork City. Now they have got busy over the last couple of weeks and they've needed to do so, bringing in three high profile players. The first being Dylan McVlade, a player who plays the number 10 attacking midfield role. He was at Bray Wanderers last season, did really, really well in the first division. He moved to Blight Spartans in England in the non-league and he's after coming back, he was homesick there, came back to Ireland and he's signed for Cork City. And I think this is a really, really good signing for Cork. He's kind of reminds me of kind of Jack Grealish in the way he plays. Brings a lot of creativity to that Cork team that they really, really lacked last season. So that's a really good signing for me. The next signing was winger Corey Galvin from uh, Neighbours Waterford. He's been a solid player for them for the last couple of seasons. He's a good little winger and he'll bring a lot of depth to the Cork City team. And I think that's a good little squad player that they brought in there. Now Cork City have needed a striker and they have brought in Connor Davis. He was with Derry City last year. So that's a good signing. It'll be interesting to see how he gets on next year. Next up we have Derry City and they have brought in Connor McCormack in the pre uh, previous LOI transfer show. We had said that that was a really, really strong rumour. There's a couple of other teams in for him as well. But Derry City have gone and confirmed the signing of him from Cork City. A very, very good player in my book. 28, 29 years old, a really good midfielder. Brings a lot of leadership skills to that squad and is a really, really good replacement for Greg Sloggett. Next up, to, onto the champions Dundalk, who have returned to pre-season training without Jamie McGrath. He has not signed a new deal with the club. He will leave them on a free transfer. He's weighing up options abroad in England, apparently, at the moment. So he's taken his pick from a few teams. I presume it'll be a League One side that he'll join. He's a big blow, it's a big blow for them to lose him, especially on a free signing. He's a really good young player. Um, and he, he has a lot of potential to do uh, big things and it's a shame he won't see him in the Premier Division next season. Next up we have Finn Harps who are trying to add some quality to their squad and they have brought in two signings. First up Ryan Connolly from Galway United, he was previously with Shamrock Rovers. He's a good player, he has a bullet of a left foot. So that's something for Finn Harps fans to look out for next season. It's a big step up from the First Division to the Premier Division so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. The next signing for Finn Harps could be crucial in their uh, plans to stay up for next season. It's a big big signing. David Webb from St. Pat's, very experienced defender. Has obviously had a spell at St. Pat's, been with uh, Shamrock Rovers and Waterford and stuff like that before. Brings a wealth of experience to the Finn Harps defence and his performances are going to be so, so key if they're going to avoid finishing in 10th place next season. Next up we have Shamrock Rovers who have been very quiet in this window and they obviously ha are happy with their squad. They're just going to add quality. If the, uh, a quality player becomes available, they will sign him and they have signed one in Reese Marshall. A transfer fee was agreed in the region of 30,000 uh, is what I'm hearing. So that's a good signing. Uh, he can play at right back or central midfield. Um, obviously with Ethan Boyle leaving the club, they're always going to look for uh, someone that can fill in at right back and he will give them versatility in other positions as well. And I've heard a lot of good things about him. He could be a very, very shrewd signing. And as for their future signings, um, I think that it would be more the same. If a good player quality becomes available um, in a position that they need, they will go for that, but they're not going to sign anyone for, for no reason. And a certain player has become available, um, a former Shamrock Rovers striker, Daniel Carr, was released by Apollon Limassol. Now the chances of him returning to Shamrock Rovers are very, very low. When he left the club for Apollon Limassol, he heard some comments that Bradley made about his departure and he had a little bit of a go at him on Twitter. So the chances of Bradley taking back Dan Carr are quite slim. But Dan Kerr could come back to the League of Ireland. I presume there's going to be a lot of sides interested in a player like him. He could bring a lot in the final third of the pitch. He can play off to the left or through the centre. He's six foot two or something like that. He's pacey enough and uh, he's a tricky player. He'll see, he only scored, I think, 10 to 15 goals for Shamrock Rovers. But that's a decent return and a lot of teams would be interested in taking him in if the wage and stuff like that was right. So that's one to keep an eye on. Next up, we have Shelburne who have brought in another player adding to their squad for next season. I, feel, I have a weird feeling that this could be the the last one they bring in the squad looks pretty set in stone now Gary Deegan from Cambridge United now he plays in the kind of number six defensive midfield role he's in his 30s now very experienced head 
Um, I think that's a good sign to get in the door. He'll add a lot to that midfield, a little bit of quality um, that they really need for taking the step up from the first division to the Premier Division. I think that's a crucial signing. Next up, we have Sligo Rovers, who I've been impressed by with their business so far, but they've been dealt a massive blow ahead of their upcoming campaign with the news that Romeo Parks has left the club due to personal reasons. I hope everything is okay with him and I wish him the best of luck with his future. Um, I presume Sligo Rovers fans have no problem with him leaving the club um, due to personal reasons, of course. Um, he was a great servant to them last season. He scored a lot of goals, provided a lot of threats in the final third of the pitch, formed a really good relationship with Ronan Coughlin up top. So that's a big, big blow for um, Sligo Rovers. Possible uh, rumours of a replacement include Yo-Yo Maddy from UCD. The young uh, student has had a, had a decent season last year in the Premier Division and a uh, step up to back to the Premier Division wouldn't be too big a deal for him and playing with better players surrounding him. It could be a good signing, but uh, of course it's a big, big blow that Romeo Parks has left the club. Next up we have St. Pats and Mikey Drennan has left the club. He, I think that was a mutual agreement as well. He had been under contract, I think, for next season. Um, so his, he had mutually agreed, uh, the club and the player agreed that it was best for him to move on. So I presume um, a lot of teams will be interested in him, maybe down the bottom of the table. He started off the season really well last season. He scored seven goals in the, the first five or, five or six games, I think it was. Um, but then he kind of died off a little bit towards the end. Um, but a player that is staying at St. Pat's for next season is Dean Clark. He signed a new deal um, to stay at the club for next season. So that's positive news for Pat's fans. And the last team we're going to look at is Waterford. And they have brought in two players. They've need, they need a lot of players coming in the door and they've brought two more in. Really impressed with the goalkeeper they brought in. Ty Ryan had a great season with Cork last year. Cork fans are disappointed to see him leave the club and he'll be a really good signing for them as their number one for next season. And the next player they've brought in is Scott Allardyce. He might be sound familiar to you Bohemians fans. He spent last season of course with Bowes. Uh, he's from Scotland I think so he's a midfielder. He, he didn't really break in too much at Bowes last year. He looked uh, like a half decent player when he was playing so if he can get a, a good run of games under his belt at Waterford he could prove to be a good signing. He gives him strength and depth though which is what they need. They haven't got an awful lot of players signed up for the new season so Waterford will probably need to be busy in the last couple of weeks leading up to the campaign. Well guys there you have it. All the news, done deals, rumours uh, circulating the Premier Division at the moment. If I've missed out anything on your team make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please make sure to like, share and most importantly subscribe.